also are open for a 30 minute window. James Madison locker room is open currently. <clears throat> Okay, James Madison victorious today. They will advance to the second round, meeting with Duke on Sunday, time to be determined. We have head coach Mark Byington, grad forward T.J. Bickerstaff, junior guard Terrence Edwards Jr., and grad guard Michael Green III. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, then questions for the student athletes, then we'll dismiss them and questions for the coach. But coach, if you want to start. Yeah, I'll start with this. Um, I'll tell you exactly what I just told the team. Um, I'm proud of them but not surprised. And, you know, th this guy, these guys compete. They come to win. They play to win. And um, it, 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 we kind of heard things about our schedule not being tough and who we are, and, and we knew we belong. Uh, we know we're good. Uh, we know we can compete. And uh, they showed that today. Um, you know, from start to finish, um, I, I thought we were um, playing the right way. Um, the guys never flinched. Um, they knew the whole time that we were going to pull this thing out. And um, that's the type of group we got. And uh, they're used to winning. And uh, I love coaching them. And we know it's a, it's a, it's a challenge coming up. And, and we love challenges. We're excited about it. All right, questions for the student athletes. Once again, raise your hand. We will get a microphone to you. We'll start here on this side in row one. Uh, Jackson Hepner from the Breeze Jamie's student newspaper. Um, I don't know if it was just because um, I was sitting right next, right in front of them, but you know, for as loud as Jamie fans were, your guys' parents were almost probably the loudest section in the whole place. I just kind of want to ask you, you know, and especially for Mike, since this is a homecoming for you, what did it mean to have not only just so many supporters, but just like friends and family come to the game and just be as loud and passionate as they were? Let's start with Michael, then we'll go Terrence and TJ. Yeah, it felt great. You know, I have family and friends who hasn't seen me play since high school. They was able to come out and watch me play, and it just felt amazing to hear them and just see them here at the game. Like, it didn't feel real. Yeah, I kind of say the same thing. Um, my family traveled all the way from Atlanta up here, so um, and they booked all the way to, um, to Monday. So it was only right that we get this win today so we can just we fill out their trip. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I always say it. it's all love, man. Uh, my parents are always so supportive of my friends, and uh, I'm just glad they get to witness this because they haven't been able to do that. We'll come to this side in the front row right here in front of me. Uh, Shane Mettlin from the Daily News Record, Harrisonburg. TJ, a lot of people kind of made a big deal of them having seven-foot center. You guys hadn't played against somebody that tall in a while. Um, but, you know, Coach pointed out the other day that you guys are, are, are big – at a lot of places, even though you know mm -hmm. you're only six nine, mm -hmm. um, did you kind of take that challenge to, to go against them and, mm -hmm. and and really? I think I'll have to go look at the stats, but I think y'all scored them in the paint. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I definitely took it as a challenge. Like people were talking about that all week about how it's going to depend on how we guard the bigs and what the bigs on the other team do. So I, I took it personal and I really just uh, play with a lot of energy and I always try to prove myself on the court because I've always been under um, underlooked. We'll go to the other side of the room on the aisle. David Teal with the Richmond Times Dispatch. Terrence, related to Shane's question, Wisconsin started the day 11th in the country in offensive efficiency. You guys held or uh, <clears throat> forced them into a season high 19 turnovers. What was the game plan defensively, and how did you guys execute it? Um, I can say we we had an edge. You know, um, people. You know, you, you hear a lot of things when you're not trying to hear it, that um, they had a guy that was kind of, they was kind of comparing him to me and saying he was better and stuff. So that just gave me another edge to come out here and just defend him. And and and, and the coaches put me on everybody who start, start going off. I just had that edge. And, and that's what I got to do going forward. Um, I got to be better on the defense end. And I showed that tonight. And that's what I'm going to do on Sunday also. We'll come over here on the far end right here in front of me. Go ahead, second row. Jesse Doherty with the Washington Post. Uh, just for all the players, it seemed like you guys in the first five, ten minutes came out super aggressively defensively. What's the key to sort of just maintaining that across the whole game once you set that tone? Let's do TJ, then Terrence, then Michael. Uh, I've been talking about it all year. It's our mindset. You know, we got some older guys on the team who have been through some things and experienced some stuff. So 
um, just being able to have that mindset and set that example for our young guys when they come in and things like that, uh, that's what helps us move forward. Yeah, I think that kind of going, like, uh, being a starter, you know, you got to um, come out there and, and set the tone early, like TJ said, for, like, the, um, the guys that come off the bench. And, and that's why the guys on the bench come in and play the way they play, because we come out and set the tone like that, and it just gives them even more energy. And we just we put that together for 40 minutes, and we, we're a hard team to beat. Yeah, and I think it, the big thing for us is experience. Like, as an experienced team, we all know what it takes to win these type of games. We've all been in a bunch of them, so this is no surprise to us, and we know what it takes to win these type of games. Directly in front of me, row four. Just raise your hand real quick so they know. Go, go ahead. Michael McClure, the Wisconsin State Journal. Terrence, you said there was somebody that they were comparing you to. I guess, who was that? And I guess how much, once they started to get out, you know, early turnovers, I guess, how much did it become sort of an emotional game where you feel, you feel like you have them? Um, can you say that one more time? Sorry. Yeah, how much do you feel like it became an emotional game after some of those early turnovers? Um, you know, I don't really say it's emotional. I, I guess that's just how I play. You know, like I like to scream and get that, that, that stuff out of me. I don't like to hold that in. I, I like that's, that just keep me going. And, and, it, and it's contagious to the team. And the coaches tell me all the time, like, when I'm playing like that on defense and end, it's, it's contagious. And, 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 and yeah, that's what we're going to do Sunday. I just can't wait to get back out there. We'll stay in that same row, and then we'll go to the back. And those will be the last two student athletes. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> Mike Fitzpatrick, uh, the Associated Press, this, for all the players. You, you guys, you don't get many shots at, at power conference programs, um, and you've beaten virtually everybody you, you played this year. And that was a long time ago, but you did open the season against a Big Ten team. Did that give you guys confidence coming into this game? I'll start with Michael, then go Terrence and TJ. I feel like we've had confidence and just in the work we put in. Like, we know we're a good team, and we know that we could beat any team in any league, so we prepare for anything. Yeah, that's pick up what Mike said. Like, we, we did the same thing we did the uh, the first night coming out on the season open. We just came out, set the tone how we did at Michigan State. Um, I, I guess the same thing happened. Noah at Michigan State came out, hit the first three, and it was it was gone after that. And tonight, Noah came out and hit the first three, and it was it was the same exact thing. I kind of It kind of re <laughs> reminded me of Michigan State, for sure. Uh, yeah, I would just say, like, we're not scared of competition, and we proved that over and over again. We're not scared of, like, um, different experiences because we've been through it all. Last question for the student athletes. Just raise your hand, row five. Go ahead. Tom Marion with AP Radio. What was the key down the stretch? You never let them get to the point where they were one shot away from equaling the score. Why don't we have Terrence answer that question? Um, I can say our coaches kept staying on us and don't let off the gas. And, um, I think we was doing that a lot in conference play. Um, we we kind of got bored a little bit. So um, coming in this tournament, we knew we was going to play teams where you can't do that type of stuff. And so yeah, that's what y'all seen tonight, just us putting a full 40 minutes together. And yeah, see y'all Sunday. Fellas, thanks a lot. Thanks for taking the time. We will see you guys on Sunday. You're still home. I was going to get in. <laughs> A reminder, the locker room is still open for James Madison. Should be open for another probably 20 minutes or so. Questions for Coach at this time. We'll start here in the front row, right in front of me. Yeah, Mark, you pointed out a couple times in the past week that this was going to be the first time you're underdog since the first week of the season. But did, did these guys ever feel like underdogs going into this one? You, you never trailed. They never... Wavered. So I tried to use that. Uh, I tried to use the underdog strategy as a coach um, on on Monday in our first meeting and the first practice, and and they weren't paying attention to me. And um, so it, it came to a point where I just I just had to take them who they are, and um, they're an aggressive, competitive bunch. And um, I know we were, you know, looking looking at it underdogs, but we never felt that way. Um, you know, we we felt that we. Um, I had a chance to compete. Um, we knew it was going to be a tough game, and and that's something that these guys like. I mean, they they're not scared of challenges. They uh, they embrace them. We'll st I'll go across the aisle uh, in row four. Go ahead, Mark. Is it an is it one of the advantages of having an experienced team that when a player such as TJ or uh, Terrence, excuse me, picks up his second foul there with about seven minutes to go in the first half, you can still put him back in and essentially play him the last four minutes and have him help you extend that lead. 
Yeah, we were juggling some lineups in the first half. Um, Noah Ferdell picked up his second foul, and, and TJ got an early one and uh, you know, really quick in the game, and I didn't want him to get his second. But with Noah Ferdell and, um, and, and Terrence Edwards both playing with two fouls, um, I just thought we had to keep fresh bodies in there. And if they picked up the third, they picked up the third. Um, you know, they're, they're not typical foul out guys. And I know some people believe in not playing guys with two fouls. Uh, I'm not one of them. Um, you know, I, I judge the game and, and I trust those guys. We're going to come to the end of this row, row two. Mark, after you talked about the importance of uh, getting seven locks yesterday, I tried to track them. I don't know how well I did. Uh, but you guys hit seven with a minute left in the first. Um, is that rare to do it that early? And uh, what did that mean to just do that well in the first half? Our, our defense in the first half was phenomenal. I mean, the game plan that the guys followed and executed, their aggressiveness. And to turn them over like that is, is very rare. Um, I watched a bunch of film on them, and, and they did not turn it over. But we thought that was our advantage. We thought we could be quicker and more aggressive on the ball. And we emphasized that, and maybe that, that will take away some of their size advantages or some of the other things. But we thought that was our advantage. And in the first half, the guys did a great job of it. We're going to stay at that end of the room in row four. Go ahead. Uh, Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic. Uh, Mark, any nerves at any point today? For me or for the team? Both. Uh, I am nervous all the time. <laughs> um, so yes, I was nervous before a shoot around, before the game, and, and all the time. But um, I think it's natural. But I, I think our guys, if they were a little bit nervous, they turned it into them just being ready and be excited to play. Um, there was nothing that we did out there that the guys were hesitant on. And that's what we kept emphasizing, that, look, if somebody's going to get us, it's not because we're going to go in and we're going to be scared or hesitant. If they get us, they're going to get us. Um, but we're going to be aggressive and, and play the way we're supposed to play. We're going to go to the other side of the room here in row one. Go ahead. Um, coach, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know this is this was your first ever March Madness game. You're officially one and zero in the big dance. Um, just how does that feel? I mean, um, if you saw me right after the game, I wanted to run to the locker room and start getting ready for Duke. And like uh, we've had great wins this year, um, you know it's it, it's hard to enjoy it, um, you know, because there's something I'm always always next. So how does it feel? I'm really not not feeling a lot of emotion right now. Um, my thing is, is I got to get back tonight, got a late night, get these guys ready for Duke. We've got time for one more question. We'll go here right in front of me in row four. You you kind of alluded to the lack of turnovers for Wisconsin recently, but they had had some games throughout the year where they turned it over a lot. I guess I'm sure you examined those. Like, what what did you examine about the way that those teams defended them? And you know how? I mean, the only team in the in, in the Big Ten that we kind of saw. Um, emulate what we were doing a little bit was Rutgers. And, um, you know, it, uh, we didn't really see it much in, 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 in maybe Tennessee a little bit. Um, we didn't see it much lately. And, and I didn't know if we, could, if we could do it or not. I mean, I looked at a stat in the last five games. I think Chucky Hebron was 18 assists and four turnovers, and he plays 38 minutes a game or something like that. That's incredible. And so I didn't know if we could turn him over. Um, but I, I thought our aggressiveness would help us with our post defense. I thought our aggressiveness might turn them over, but it would help us with guys trying to drive and, and closing gaps down. So um, it was a mentality, but it was also just a way we had to play. And I thought it was, a, it was the right way to play for us uh, to try to have a chance to win against them. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. See you on Sunday. All right, thank you all. James Madison locker room is still open. Wisconsin will be on the podium here in just a minute or two.